This is quite a special uh, RP-168 <clears throat> record changer. Uh, this was manufactured to use in RCA's uh, way over the top of the line uh, entertainment center, which was made in 1947-48. And because the 45 was, re uh, was introduced after that Berkshire was made, and it was such a high-end unit, they made this special 45 player just for that. And the differences are right off the bat, you notice that the turntable mat is black. It's a black with like a fuzzy velveteen finish. And I've removed this because the turntable's got to be refinished. And oops, um, this is a impregnated cloth mat. It's not vinyl. It's not linoleum like the other RP-168s. Uh, you'll, we'll see the difference, why this cap is off here. And oh, by the way, it has a black cap and revolving separators. Um... <clears throat> the other difference, the tone arm is made for a magnetic cartridge. This originally had a magnetic cartridge that somebody put in this uh, junky crystal cartridge. Uh, but you can't put an RCA 45 cartridge in here if you wanted to because the screw spacing is totally different. That's a good thing because you can use a modern cartridge in here. The spacing is, is now today's industry standard for cartridge spacing, but you can't use the flat normal 45 cartridge in here. And as you'll notice too, this is painted a, uh, a semi-gloss black color. This will actually shine more. It's, it was supposed to shine more than it is now. It has not been cleaned yet. Nothing's been serviced on this yet. Uh, other differences in this thing, the one notable difference is the motor. The motor on this one, and only this one, was a very heavy-duty capacitor run motor. This is a shaded pole motor because uh, of hum problems with magnetic cartridges. They had to put a much higher quality motor in here, and that's why this is in here. Uh, this is an RP-168-2. This was uh, final assembly was in 1949, the 29th week, so almost mid-year. So let's just say May, June. Um, this had several problems, it still does. Um, notice this here. Look at the rust on the, the pivot shaft of the tone arm. It's because they didn't put any lubricant on it from the factory, and it's stuck in this bore. And the only way they can get that out is, and you have to take the arm assembly off the turntable changer in order to get it apart. You can't take it out of the cabinet unless you take the arm off, so that uh, gets to be a little catch-22. But what you can do is, while it's in the cabinet, carefully, you put apply heat with like a uh, disposable cigarette lighter right to this point here. Make sure you don't have anything that's burnable is out of the way. And after you get that good and hot, dribble a little bit of 3-in-1 oil on the seam, and you'll see it wick into that hole, and uh, eventually it will... I would say, say melt the uh, rust. It, it, it acts as a solvent, and it enables you to eventually be able to pull the arm out. The other problem that happens with all of these RP-168s, if you ever get one of these and you go to turn it through its cycle by hand and it just stops dead, it's because it's stuck up in here in the top caps uh, assembly. The posts that the little gears sit on top of the oil turns to cement and you can't get them apart what you have to do is take this top cap off because this is styrene plastic it will melt and you have to take this out of your way once you have the turntable where it looks like this and the mat is off it you can invert this into a pot of boiling water don't gasp because uh, it works and that boiling water will get everything equally and evenly hot enough without using an open flame that these will eventually drop out and then you can re-oil them and clean them and re-oil them. Um, you don't have to worry about the plastic shelves here because these are made of Bakelite. They're not affected by heat, although they can burn and char, so that's why you can't use a flame on it. But you can use boiling water and that will get these soft enough. If it's upside down, they'll eventually just, just drop out and then you can get it apart to clean it. Anyway, that's a brief look at this. This was, by the way, also the first, it's the same drive wheel that they use. This is also stuck, it can't move at all. Uh, this has to be replaced because it's got a severe dent in it. Um, this was the first edition of the drive wheel. It's got the two holes and the silver or gray color of the uh, drive wheel. This also has the dash pot right here. The, uh, or I call it the piston. This is the part that guides the post of the tone arm down so it's more smooth. Again, this has to be 
very clean but no oil if you put oil in this thing it'll seal and it won't let the thing it'll just stay up the arm will stay up in the air forever and it won't settle down on the record but that's the uh, first edition of the of the piston one word of caution again on these when you see this grayish green uh, uh, fuzzy like corrosion on any of these metal parts that's cadmium oxide it's poisonous so you want to run uh, run it under water after you remove it as you clean it off to get all that uh, corrosion off there it'll come off very easily but it is poisonous it's cadmium so anyway it's not deadly poison but anyway all right so that's a brief look at this you're going to see this thing back together in its entirety and working back when uh, when Seberg's rock gets us back